Welcome to a brand new edition, a brand new series that we're launching on Kelowna Now. It is called Mindful Conversations, and I cannot tell you how thrilled I am to have Paige Matheson in studio with me to kick off this series. Uh, Paige, thank you so much for I'm joining. I'm so stoked. This is going to be dope. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. So, uh, well, I'm biased. I <laughs> I think it's going to be amazing because I've had the pleasure of seeing you on stages. Mm. Uh, and I can tell you the very first time I saw you, uh, it you stood out. You were different. And then I saw you again. And I'm like, ooh, I recognize this lady. Consistency in, in messaging. And you really have this magnetic drawing power. Mm. So Paige, thank you for coming in and kicking yeah. us off. Your counseling uh, company mm -hmm. is Another Chapter Counseling. Mm -hmm. Beautiful name. Thank you. I thought it would just be like a little play on words with my name being Paige. I was like, turn a page counseling is too obvious. I'll just, <laughs> I'll just another rock chapter. another chapter. Love it. Love mm -hmm. it. So thank you very much for coming into studio with thank us. Thanks for having me. We all sit in a very mm, unprecedented time, mm -hmm. I think, and and I think there is, and I defer to you, I think there's still uh, an opinion around counseling that mm -hmm. might not be positive. Totally. Uh, I think we have a number of people that are possibly sitting and suffering in silence mm -hmm. and your approach. I really want to talk about your approach. Mm -hmm. Can you, can you share? Yeah. Oh, yeah. absolutely. I, I've always found that I, I worked in mental health prior to becoming a counselor. I was a psychiatric nurse for about 15 years. And I found that in a hospital environment, we, we pathologized everything. Everything had a label and everything had a medication for that label. Oh. And I just didn't get the time I wanted with my clients or at the time my patients because I was running around doing all my other nursing duties because we're short staffed in that realm. And so when I transitioned I was like, wow, I can really, really, <clears throat> excuse me, hone in on quality of life. Mm. Quality of life is huge to me. And part of quality of life truly comes down to being able to enhance those moments of joy and happiness. Because even when the world is filled with misery or really tragic things that are happening, we are in this lifetime living it. We need to reclaim our life which we haven't been able to do as much, or we went through such a huge shift for so many years. Now people are really struggling to reintegrate. What is being social like? What is Absolutely. having fun like? What does this look like when we're still kind of navigating all of the icky feelings that we still have associated with that time period, regardless of where they're coming from? And I think there's such healing and laughter. Mm -hmm. And and if I can, I, I remember the onset of, of COVID. And for those that know me, I, I take pride in mm -hmm. combing my hair and dressing uh, a certain way in business and, and always showing up. And I remember those first few weeks in um, the pandemic. Mm -hmm. I remember Alexa, my right-hand person that keeps me mm -hmm. connected to this, this business world. She said, oh my, I think you're not doing well. She phoned my daughter and she said, Kimberly, I think you need to come home. Your mom's wearing your dad's sweatpants and she's <laughs> not combing her hair. But, and we laugh, yeah. we laugh, but that was an absolute reality. Right. So she came home and we literally worked in the yard, in the garden. So you're putting your hands in the dirt and she made me laugh, Paige. She made me laugh. And I have tears rolling down my cheeks as I've got this laughter from the, from the, like right from my core. And I remember it being almost, uh, release like, yes. or so you, this laughter that you do, I've seen you do it on stage. Yes. How do you incorporate laughter in a typical 
Mm -hmm. session with the patient. Well, and even just like listening to you tell that story, like I could just feel it like from my heart right to my like abdomen. It just, I felt that relief because I've known it from that, that laughter sensation. And how I love to integrate laughter in is when a person does laugh in session, I don't, I don't stifle it. Mm. There's all these memes that exist of like, oh, if you can make your therapist laugh, like it's like a challenge. It's like, oh, it's challenge accepted. You're going to make me laugh. Like we're going to laugh together. And I encourage it and then I enhance it and we laugh and we just, and then I just get them to tune in for a second or I revert back because sometimes laughter can be a way of just kind of hiding mm. behind a wall. Yeah. As well, because there's that therapeutic, like, oh, this is such a release. And then there's that, I don't want to feel it. So I'm just going to put a joke in front of it. And being Mm -hmm. able to, like, know which one is which and being able to kind of be like, love that joke, solid perspective shift. What is happening behind the scenes? Where are you feeling here? So laughter can be both like a sign of pain, but it can also be a beautiful sign of release. And that's interesting. You're seeing in, or at least I am through the algorithm, I'm seeing memes and messages coming through TikTok and and Instagram around Robin Williams and the the Mm. comedians or the laughter is that hiding of of such deep pain. Mm -hmm. So how you're, you obviously need to be able to read people really well (laughs) to be able to determine which one is the, the block. Yep to hide the pain and which one is the therapy release, the genuine uh, laughter that is, is healing. Totally. Because I knew myself, like I was very much like a class clown type of human. (laughs) I was the people pleaser that please everybody like me. I'm really funny kind of kid. And I used that for so many years as like a method of coping and it became such a piece Mm. of my identity And then when I hit a certain time period in my life where my mental health was really struggling, and it has had different time periods, I would notice that I would use laughter and humor and like almost like as like a mask or a facade. But then eventually there came a time period where my body just wouldn't allow that anymore. Mm -hmm. It just said, no, you need to be real here. And so now because my lived experience, I can, I can feel when, oh, this is actually something that's very troubling and hurting versus, oh, what a beautiful release. Like, what a great way to just, like, shift and change and, like, feel something differently about this moment. So let's talk about counseling. So I think we have a a moral responsibility to check in with ourselves and and see if we're okay. Mm -hmm. I think we have to do those Mm check-ins. And I think we have to be real. If, If not, we do need to reach out. Yeah. Uh, but I think we have a responsibility to keep an eye on each other. Mm-hmm. I think there's uh, denial, protectivism uh, of one's well-being. So mm-hmm. I think someone peeking over the fence, like Alexa did for me. Yes. She she knew I wasn't doing well. I didn't know I wasn't yeah. doing well because you're in it. Yes. So I think how how would you... Mm, recommend someone honor boundaries, mm, mm-hmm. but yet still care enough to to bring it up and just do that check in that just gives that person that moment to think, oh, you know what? Maybe I do need to book an appointment. Maybe I do need to reach out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's just such a great question because. We all have different cues that show that we're not okay. And it sounds like she knew your cue very well of, mm. okay, she's wearing sweatpants. What's happening? Not mine. <laughs> not your sweatpants. You're like, I need extra cozy. Thank you. But like you said, when we're in it, we can't feel it. And so it is, or when we're in it, we don't notice yeah. what's happening. And it can be really hard to approach that subject when we're checking in with somebody because we very naturally, when we're not feeling good, have more of that natural defensiveness. So defensive and And offended. Yeah, yeah. And it's just like this, like this feeling of like a threat. And it's, it's, and it feels like a threat because it feels like a threat to our sense of belonging or the sense of self that we project to the world. And so if someone comes up to me, I just know that I, as hard as it is to try and look at it through a lens of curiosity 
And if you're approaching a person for like a check-in of, hey, I've just noticed this and I'm just wondering, how is everything impacting your life? What's going on in your world? And sometimes people will open up and sometimes they won't. But that's a very tricky dance. It's a tricky dance. So approach it, uh, I think, more with the the care call, the check-in. Oh, yeah. I'm just checking in to see how you're doing. Yeah. And, and dependent on the reaction. Mm-hmm. And I do think even, even that check-in, if they maybe do open up, uh, great. Mm-hmm. But if they don't, I think maybe that'll give them a moment for pause. To- Our hope is that. Yeah. But one of the things I've noticed, especially like in my line of work of mental health, is I might say the same thing 10 times. And then one session, they'll just say something back. And it's mm-hmm. what I have been saying. So you never know what seed is being planted. And then every time we kind of like reapproach it or kind of like gently, like I like to think of it as like a gentle challenge of I've noticed this and, and I'm wondering what your thoughts are on this or how you're feeling about it. It's also kind of fertilizing that seed and allowing it to grow into the space of like, am I okay? Mm-hmm. Maybe I'm not okay. Because the big thing is too, when a person does admit I'm not okay, a lot of times they don't know what to do with that. And that's where therapy can come in. So the... Uh- I, again, I mean, I'm hardly understanding of the, of the financial ramifications uh, at a local level, at a provincial level, or at a federal level, but I've always had the notion that, I, that I've always felt disciplines like RMT or Cairo, the touch Mm-hmm. therapies that they sh- they're a big part of mental health mm-hmm. and I do think um, counseling is is a much needed part of mental health mm-hmm. and I would love to see it and I don't know if it is I don't know if it's underneath our our, uh, our MSP? Med- yeah <clears throat> no no it's not really? unfortunately there are there are services that you can do, do through like a health authority. Unfortunately, based on the amount of clinicians versus the amount of need for the people who are seeking those services, there's always a wait list. And that's really, really disheartening because so many people need help and they need it faster, mm-hmm. right? And that's and that's just kind of inevitable at this time. So if you have benefits through work that cover mental health services, amazing. Some people okay. have incredible benefits and some people don't, which is such a bummer because... <laughs> Good mental health will equal longevity in a career, will equal longevity in a space of employment. It enhances their own Mm self-worth. So then they feel like they're bringing more to the table. They feel valued because their mental health is being considered. Like, it's huge. Huge. I think, uh, and again, I don't know if this is a uh, gender thing, if this is a generational Mm -hmm. thing, but I think... And again, I'm going to be broad stroke brush. I think a lot of caregivers have mm, maybe not mastered how to prioritize their physical or their mental Mm -hmm. well-being because we're busy caring for others. Uh, So I think there's a real need to challenge uh, ourselves and each other to recognize the obvious Mm -hmm. when we're healthy we can care it's the mask the mask comes down on the airplane yep put it on yourself first before someone else so I think there needs to be uh maybe a bit more practicing of care for oneself which would take pause and so many people nowadays especially like in our culture it's such a hustle Everything is a hustle. hustle. (laughs) Everything is so sped up. So we're almost always living in like a chronic fight or flight state. There's always something to do. That's this feeling of I need to do this and I need to do that. And this urgency energy. And like I even feel my shoulders going Mm. up because like it exists everywhere. So we have to prioritize being able to tune in and check in. And that's what I love to do with therapy too. A lot of people don't even know how. Mm -mm. People don't even know how to tune in. People don't know that there's the biological, the sociological, the psychological, and the spiritual elements of self that need to be in some form of harmony. I love the word harmony over balance because balance feels like this yeah. and harmony kind of feels like this this more ebb and flow. There's, there's more naturalness. 
like an it. ecosystem yeah. of well-being versus that teeter-totter that's totally. one or the other because totally. there's so many uh, factors that influence that. Mm-hmm. So you have a beautiful practice. Mm-hmm. You have a number of other clinicians. Yep. Is yep. that the right terminology? Yeah. So the you're you've got quite the wait list you're in demand I am in demand it's actually like the summer dip though is good because it actually lots of people are feeling a bit more happier healthier they're outside more so summer usually dips okay okay but um I would say that overall we have a pretty steady flow of humans who are wanting to seek support and services for sure okay so that's your uh your work with the the clinic, the mm-hmm. uh, another chapter counseling. Yep. But you have something else that mm-hmm. has been calling you, or you've naturally stepped into, <laughs> and that is your speaking. Yeah. Are you? Can you? Can you share more yeah. about that? Oh, uh, I just I'm very pro spreading the word of joy. <laughs> I'm very pro spreading the word of joy. I I slowly well I've been on stage since I was five (laughs) doing a variety of random things and I just found that every single like creative outlet kind of eventually died off whether it was music or poetry or whatever it was and comedy but now I've kind of merged all of that together with my counseling background and my mental health information and really have started to curate different ways of talking to people about really tough subjects in a way that's really easy to consume. So like really fun and like hard so we can talk about anxiety and burnout or we could talk about joy and just like enhancing and embracing that. And then, of course, doing lots of laughter activation and groups that way, too. Laughter activation. Mm -hmm. So on the, on the stages of, of public speaking right now, you're, uh, accepting any invitations Mm -hmm. on any stages you'll, yep, you'll travel and and go anywhere around the laughter activation. Is it, um, is it, is it like public events that you're attending or do you want to even, or are you already taking um uh gigs in corporate Mm -hmm. organizations that want to bring you in to speak to the team yeah I do public and corporate so I've spoken at hospitals I've spoken at lots of different women in leadership groups I love speaking with women in leadership there's just this this beautiful energy of this this well not even just beautiful beautiful and powerful energy among these women and I just want to loosen people up I want to express mm. their humanness. I want them to be able to settle in and sink into joy and laughter and fun and playfulness. And it's just really cool. It's amazing. <laughs> I love Kate. watching it. I love watching it. So anyone watching uh, can reach out to you, your mm-hmm. office. Uh, hopefully you share out in socials where you're going to be yep so follow what are some of your channels for people to follow you on or yeah for sure my top ones are um another chapter.ca on instagram and tiktok i have also the optimistic speaker on (laughs) instagram and tiktok and i also have a laughter page which is a bit more of my personal life but whatever it's a a little bit of silly i I love it (laughs) i try jokes and they're not very funny but i try (laughs) I've, I've heard you. You're funny. Uh, Paige, thank you so much for coming in and, and sharing with us. And, and to everyone listening, I do hope you take enormous care of yourself and the, your sphere around you and make sure and, and lean into anybody that you see needing help. Mm-hmm. Couldn't thank agree you. more. Thank you, Paige. <laughs>